Hello everyone and again thank you for joining with me each and every week as uh, we share the word of God together and thank you for your encouragement, your words, your prayers, your gifts. Uh, it means so much to uh, Angie and I as we uh, enter into now our 15th year of ministry here at Myrtle Grove uh, Methodist Church. Today's a special day, second Sunday of Advent, but it's also the first Sunday of uh, December in which we celebrate Holy Communion. So there's a couple of things you'll need if you'd like to get a candle. We're going to light our Advent candle for today. Uh, today is the candle of preparation. We'll look at John the Baptist, a figure uh, in uh, the uh, New Testament, who came to prepare the people to receive the Messiah. And so uh, we're in the season of Advent, this is a season of preparation as we anticipate not only the birth of Christ, celebrate that in our world, but also the second advent of Christ, his second coming into our world. So we're going to light the candle of preparation uh, at the beginning, uh, and then at the end, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion together. So if you'd like to pause this video, go grab a candle and some bread and juice and come back and join me for the message. Uh, amen and amen. Our passage of scripture this morning it, uh, comes out of Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, when this Elijah-like figure, John the Baptist, comes on the scene, coming out of the wilderness, uh, and the scripture says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judah and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who spoke of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sin, and they were baptized by John in the Jordan River. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, in Advent, our thoughts naturally turn to the birth of uh, little baby Jesus and his mother, uh, <clears throat> the blessed uh, Virgin Mary, uh, and uh, th those events that surrounded Jesus' birth. And yet, the lectionary uh, readings, the lectionary are a group of scriptures that are, ha that, that are on, actually on my calendar each and every uh, Sunday. There's a group of scriptures that you read from the lectionary. And then w over a course of three years, uh, then you're supposed to have been read or preached through the Bible. That's how that works. Well, the lectionary passages and readings for this Advent season, uh, the first and second weeks of Advent especially, feature quite a few stories about this figure, John the Baptist. Now, I'm going to call him from here on out the Baptist, either with John himself as the protagonist or as Jesus discussing John, and his significance. So why does the Baptist figure so prominently, figure is so prominent in, in our scripture reading and in the early days of Advent? Well, Jesus said that John the Baptist was the greatest prophet of all the prophets. He said in Matthew's gospel, chapter 11, that there is no greater prophet than John. And I wonder why. Well, because the other prophets if you will recall, the other prophets prepared the people for a Messiah who would come in a long distance, a long time. Now, John the Baptist prepared the people for the Messiah who was about to arrive. And when Jesus finally did appear, as he was coming down the Sea of Galilee, John points to him, and in John's Gospel, the first chapter, it says that John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So John is the first one to point to him as the Messiah who has come. He, The Baptist had a miraculous birth as well. And we know that in Scripture, whenever a person 
has this miraculous birth or the product of a miracle birth, that that person has a very special vocation or calling of God. The scripture reminds us that John was filled with the Holy Spirit even while he was in his mother's womb. And he was chosen by God before the, even the foundations of the world to be the forerunner to continue the ministry of Elijah. Because Elijah was the figure that would come before the Messiah would, would actually come. Elijah would be the forerunner in the Old Testament. He would, would announce that the Messiah had come. He would be that prophet. And that's why John has been that New Testament Elijah. The Old Testament prophet was who was to reappear and to announce the Messiah. Now in John, John is that figure announcing, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So John holds a very special place in the Advent narrative. It's no surprise then that when John appears, since he's this figure like Elijah, that he's wearing a coat uh, of uh, camel's hair and eating wild locusts and honey. Uh, uh, Elijah is the only Old Testament prophet to dress that way. You can find that in 2 Kings. Jesus would explain later how Elijah had come in the person of John the Baptist in Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter, Matthew 17. There had been no prophet in Israel, remember, for hundreds of years. So people were thrilled at the prospect that a prophet had appeared during their lifetime. So they wanted to come out and hear him and listen to him, and they were intrigued about his message. If the Baptist truly was who he claimed, a prophet and the return of Elijah, the, the people could hardly let this opportunity pass. So crowds went in great numbers, the scripture tells us, out into the desert, which is a traditional place where people have encountered God, to hear what this exceptional prophet of God had to say. And John cried out using the words of the prophet Isaiah, uh, make his path straight, prepare the way of the Lord. This message initially was for the crowds of people who heard John's message 2,000 years ago. But they are certainly ever new for us today. During this Advent season, we should prepare the way of the Lord. We should make and remove and clear any obstacle that would present that would prevent Christ from coming into our life. So that when Christ does appear, if Christ were to come in his second Advent on Christmas, hallelujah, I hope he does. He will be unimpeded. Uh, he'll have unimpeded access to our heart. So John's message, John is our modern day Elijah. He is our prophet during this Advent season, reminding us to prepare the way of the Lord, to make his path straight in our heart and our life. John also preached uh, a, a baptism of repentance and of forgiveness of sins. And this is how we prepare this is how we make God's way straight. John wanted his listeners to renounce sin, to be washed in their, from their impurities, and to be in a state of grace whenever Jesus appeared. Likewise, we as, as we anticipate the memorial of the coming of Christ, if we wish to be well prepared, as John had prepared his people for this solemn feast of Christmas, would be wise to renounce whatever sin in our life. And in a few moments, we're going to have a prayer of confession where we announce and we renounce uh, our sin before the Lord. We ask forgiveness that we have not been his people. We've been unfaithful. And so there's this line that says uh, that God loved us even while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. Toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll say you're forgiven. And then I hope you'll say back to me, I'll be listening. Uh, I'll pray uh, that you'll say, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And I'll receive that in Jesus' name. We need to be prepared. We need to be washed. 
of our past infirmities and impurities and be in a state of grace on Christmas when Christ comes again. The Baptist kept Jesus first above all things in his life, and so should we. You know, Advent means coming, and it prepares us for Christ's coming. He came as a baby, God Emmanuel, God incarnate on earth. And with the readings about John the Baptist in Advent, the church is teaching us to prepare for his second coming. The gospel text about John the Baptist paint him as a fiery apostolic prophet, convinced that the mighty one coming after him, Jesus, would bring about the end of the world and usher in the kingdom of God. And that's why the church's lectionary for Advent also presents gospel texts about Jesus preaching about the kingdom and healing. Advent is meant to help us get our spiritual lives tuned up, ready, so we'll be ready when Christ comes again to finally, hallelujah, conquer sin and death and hell and the devil all in one mighty blow. And so Advent prepares us not merely to welcome and to worship uh, the little baby Jesus, but to accept Jesus' call for us to take up our, to deny ourselves, to take up his cross and to follow him daily. In communion this morning, Christ offers us himself, bread for the journey, to feed and nourish us along the way, and wine to remind us that the blood of Christ cleanses us and it has the power to heal and to forgive. We rejoice today that John the Baptist call is still ringing true and loud today that in this season of Advent, let the church prepare the way of the Lord. And let's do so through repentance. Let's do so by turning to the Lord. And in Luke's gospel, they asked, how can we prepare? How can we turn? What can else can we do? And you remember Jesus said that, if, well, if you see someone hungry, feed them. If you see someone naked, clothe them. If you see someone in prison, have a visit. If you know any widows or orphan, take care of them. So there's a way that we can prepare, not only through confession and pardon, but also by giving our lives to him in service. That's what it means to pick up our cross and to follow Jesus daily. I pray that today you'll have a blessed uh, Advent Sunday, a, ta a day as we think about preparing our lives and hearts. And what better way for us to start this preparation but through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, in our hymnal, we have a, sh a version, a short version of Word and Table, <clears throat> and I'm going to share that with us. The invitation is simple. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin. That's part of that preparation who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. That also encapsulates the greatest command that Jesus said that we could live by, to love the Lord God of all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law, and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Free us, we pray. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That's proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The great thanksgiving begins with the Lord. Be with the Lord be with you as he is with me. Lift up your hearts as we lift them up to the Lord. 
because it's a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with all of God's people on earth and all the company of heaven, the saints that's gone before us, we praise God's name and join their unending hymn. Would you say it with me? Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and blessed are, is your son, Jesus Christ. By his baptism, suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to the church. Hallelujah. He delivered us from the slavery of sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and by the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Say it with me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and those who hear me this morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes and his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you would, take the uh, your bread or cracker or whatever that you have, and let us break it together. And let us receive of the body of our Lord. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for all that we have received in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Help us to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord. Help us to prepare our minds, Lord, that we might be those who would proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, prepare our lives to receive you and to live for you, to love others for you, and to be in ministry to all the world until you're coming again and final victory. Lord, we thank you for this season of Advent. Now, Lord, I pray your Advent blessing upon all those who hear me today. May the peace of Christ be with you, and may the peace of Christ be in all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.